Hey guys, I just wanted to create a uh, video here based on estimating. I know that there's probably a lot of new guys out there that are trying to get this figured out and haven't found a good video, or maybe you have and you just want a little bit more insight. So I'm gonna take you around this property that we've got here. Um, it's actually one of our local Airbnbs. Um, and he is basically giving me free range on what to do here. Of course, we wanna keep it low maintenance for a place like this and we wanna make sure that everything is nice and tidy for when people show up because we don't want them to get a bad taste just off the bat when you pull into the driveway from the landscape and the yard to be quite honest with you. Uh, we take care of the yard here and the landscaping and any other little maintenance deals that they need done. So I'm just gonna walk you guys around and just kind of show you um, what we would do and what we typically uh, would suggest to a customer in this kind of situation. So, uh, try and get a couple different shots here again I'm new to this so we're gonna try and get this figured out for you guys if you do have any suggestions please let me know and of course subscribe to the channel so that we can keep blowing this thing up first here you want to try and get all these leaves out of here and get these weeds out so this customer is currently wanting to get everything switched over to a rock which is what we suggested this past fall simply because it's an Airbnb and he doesn't want the maintenance to be uh, to mulch it every single year which I totally understand so we're gonna go through here and trim out some of these bushes, get them off the house. You don't want it touching the house and scrape it up against, say, like that gutter. Um, you wanna get these golden threads kind of pushed back off of the uh, sidewalk here. You don't want someone coming down with their suitcase and uh, rubbing up against the bush. People don't like that. Um, so that'd be one of the things. And then you see how it's real, uh, all the leaves back there. Get those cleaned up and get this bush trimmed back a little bit make sure it's off the windows back there you don't want to ruin screens or anything and then i'll just go back around here so you've got actually some hostas you can see they're starting to poke up springtime is coming so we'd probably take this tree out just because it's so close to the house it doesn't look good it looks dead you want to get maybe like a hydrangea back there just make it nice and big there's also a uh bush called a spice bush it does a real uh, fragrant smell which smells super nice in the springtime it'll help elevate customer experience just walking around the property so there's a lot of plants through here that haven't come up yet because they're things like uh, day lilies and hostas. get these trimmed up you want to make sure these look real nice um, go through here and he actually suggested because if you can see which i'll show you guys in a minute there's a pool area back there. So he actually wants this tree right here taken out and he might want this tree taken out. I don't know if I would take it out yet, but he's trying to keep the leaves out of his pool area, which again, keeping that low maintenance that you want to try and do. Um, so we'll get this trimmed up. If he wants to keep it, we'll get this trimmed up and we'll cut this one out. And then this box right here from the previous homeowner, they used to have a garden in here. And this is Thistle Century right here. We try to get, we're going to get all this out, till it up, put new grass here, get this obstacle out of the way. And then we'll go over here. And again, a lot of daylilies and hostas. It's a low maintenance deal. Trim some of these bushes up just a little bit. Those needed to be deadheaded, but that's okay. We'll get those. And then we'll go around here. So what I always suggest... What I always suggest when there's fencing, like this fencing right here, is I always like to do like a hard rock uh, a edge around the entire thing, simply because you get grass, so I'll try and come up in. There, get you at a better angle, sorry. Again, new to this, trying to figure this out. <laughs> but, uh, what was I saying? So you'll, have, you'll be going around here with a weed eater all through here, and you can see there'll be little tufts of grass that'll come up, and then you'll start well, you'll see right here, this was from a previous landscaper that came in here and they were mowing and you start hitting that edging with the weed eaters. Yeah, I mean, you just see the damage through here. And you just, you wanna try and get that to not be the case because then you start damaging that customer's property. It looks bad, you start dinging up the paint. It just, it doesn't look good. So something like this, again, a low maintenance deal. And we really don't wanna be going in here Sorry, this this it's adjustment deal, making sure that's not down here and up here. But you want to make sure that you go through here and you don't want to go into the area where all the customers are gonna be at. 
uh, while they're trying to have a good time. I mean, you can just see, I mean, look at this. You can just see the damage that someone has just, just didn't care. And you just, you can't do that. So we're gonna go through here and put some rock edging around the entire uh, fence here. I mean, you see you got it up here. This is kind of a pain in the butt of an area to mow. So just to ease for us and ease for the customer, make sure we preserve this fence as long as possible. Um, let's see, it's a nice sunny day. We're supposed to get snow here though. There's a little tree up there that's gotta go away. He just, he wants to make sure that everything is just really maintained so that his customers aren't having to worry about anything and he doesn't have to worry about keep, to keep coming back out here. Take this little tree out. It's pretty much gone. These bushes, make sure they're nice, clean, trimmed. Nice, clean, trimmed. Because this is a major walkway for people. And this is where they're going to be spending all their time. So you want to make sure that this is all completely cleared out. I apologize that the wind's going crazy right now. Um, but go through here. Low maintenance. Make sure it's clean. I mean, you just see. It's just... It's not good. And now, yes, it's springtime and, you know, you get leaves, you get debris, whatever it might be. But for a place like this, you got to keep it as low maintenance as possible. You got to make it look nice, but you got to keep it as low maintenance as possible. So if you guys have any suggestions for any videos that, you know, you guys want to see, I know we're really new in the game here, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. I'm perfectly fine with answering any questions you guys want to have answered try to answer them the best I can. Uh, I'm not one that's gonna BS with anybody. Got a farm over here. There's one of the grain trucks. I don't wanna BS anybody and give you the wrong answer because I know there's a lot of people out there who are just really trying to figure out what to do with say their own property or their business. So, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. I, I have plenty of people that I can ask. So I'll try and do my best to answer that for you. Um, I'm going to get some drone shots here, do some overhead maybe, and then I'm going to show you guys how to do the wheel that we use. that we do when we go through an estimate is you need your measuring wheel. You need to measure all your beds for mulch, rock, new landscape, whatever that area is. Don't rely on Google. I mean, you're asking for your numbers to be skewed and customers to be mad because your estimates are so far off. Now, taken with that, estimates are estimates. The numbers are never going to be right. I mean, they might be, but it, don't expect them to be right every single time it's just not gonna happen so one of the things that we like to do let's see if you can see that is I go and measure the bed you know the length and then the width 44 uh, feet by 3 inches and then by 8 foot and then we have 23 feet by 4 feet and 7 inches and so on and so forth and you go around all the beds and you measure all of them and then you jot little notes down like this is the front bed or this is this bed because you may have a customer go like with here they want rock everywhere and they may go hey we just want rock in the back we want mulch up front by rock in the back then you got to go through and remeasure everything because you didn't mark which measurements were what so i stopped right here at the edge of the house you want to try and break it up as much as possible so that you're getting the most accurate readings. Now that doesn't mean, you know, every little ledge that comes out, you need to stop and, you know, mark it down, etc. You wanna just make sure like, this is a skinnier point right here, which was 23 by four feet and seven inches. I stopped because I went to a drastic part over here, which then came out to 15 feet and four inches long and 10 feet by uh, five inches. So. You want to try and break it down as much as you can, you know, within reason to make sure that you're getting your most accurate readings. All right, so I just got done 
doing the uh, measurements around the whole property and I thought of a couple different things to let you guys know about was as you're going around a property make sure you're finding little things to, to uh, suggest to a customer like they may not have said it and you know some people might consider upselling but I look at it as you showing that you care about the property trying to improve it as much as you know how to and can so you know this plant needs to come out here that plant needs to come out there or maybe let's add this or that to the property uh, showing that you are thinking about more than what that customer is wanting can be a great thing and you know they may say hey no we just want what we talked about which is fine you gotta you know it's okay and people are gonna say no and that's fine but you need to always be looking for little suggestions it'll help you in the long run with doing your estimates being able to catch different things that you weren't even thinking about and it may be able to help you when you're going through the yard catch something that a customer didn't even know was there some of these people that we do uh work for they've never gone to that part of the yard more than twice a year which is fine it's their property not a big deal who cares but they don't know it's there and I, my famous thing that I always say, you can't fix something you don't know, so you might as well suggest it to the customer. And if they say no, then it's all right. You told them, they know, and you made it known that it was there. But if they don't know it's a problem, how can they hire you to do something that they don't know about? So, you know, just little things like these trees up here. We actually have a pine tree grown up in this, or it might be a spruce grown up in this dwarf right here but something as simple as our customer didn't suggest to take this tree out right here i think it needs to be taken out because it's just ugly where it's at it looks like it's dead it's not a good impression first thing when a cut or when a customer for the airbnb walks up to this front door when they pull into this driveway and come up and park and then they walk up to the front door everything around them is going to be okay is this going to be clean is this going to be well taken care of do they care about uh the property that we're at you know stuff like that you got to get those first impressions from a customer and even though some people might not think it the outside is a huge first impression do you want to go into somewhere where there's trash everywhere and nothing's up kept no you're going to want to go somewhere where everything's nice and clean everything's up kept there's no trash that's just how people think and you got to be able to get in that mindset of thinking like that and being able to catch little stuff that again a customer may not know that they want or need but if you suggest it you've given that suggestion and you've helped them think about something that they didn't know so that's just my two cents you know take it with what you want if you don't want to take it that's fine but you know that's just my two cents on it so i'm going to cut from here and then i'm going to go to the computer show you guys how we work up an estimate how we send it um, how we do some of the measurements online some of the programs that we use and then of course if there's anything i don't show or didn't show walking outside let me know i'm more than happy to go back through and try and figure it out for you guys hey guys so i am back here in the office now and i went through and talked to the customer try and get quickbooks pulled up as i'm talking here um but I went through and talked to the customer about the different suggestions that I was showing you guys. And with the suggestions, um, we are gonna take a couple trees out, the big ugly one there in the front, we're gonna take out, um, we're gonna put some rock along the edges of the fence so that it helps us with mowing and it keeps us out of the uh, Airbnb guest way. And then we are also going to rock everything. That's what the estimate's for. So as long as he's good with the price, we've gotten the green light. We're going to tear out the uh, garden that's in the back, the small raised bed. We're going to put rock everywhere. We're going to take a couple trees out. And we're probably going to put a Korean spice bush is what I like to use because it's real fragrant right beside the front door. So now I'm going to show you guys what we do in QuickBooks. Now I'm not going to really show you numbers. And the only reason for that is, is I don't care to show numbers, but... I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea for what they should be charging because everywhere is different. I'm in Mansfield, Ohio, and it's not going to be the same or it could be the same as, say, in Utah. It's just it, I'd rather not show you the numbers simply because I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea um, about how they should be pricing their services. 
I will show you though how we go about taking the uh, different measurements that we've done, converting those into yards. I'll show you a program that we use, and then I will show you what that estimate would look like, obviously minus the numbers. So one of the tools that we use is called Soil Direct. That's the website that we use to do our calculations. Now you can do this on a calculator or any other uh, different system for coming up with these calculations, but always make sure that you're doing cubic yards. Nine times out of 10, the yard that you're getting your mulch or rock from are gonna go by cubic yards. Now it may be different in other places, but that's how we do it here. So like I explained earlier on the piece of paper where I was taking some notes down, what we'll do is we'll put uh, the length and then the width in here, and we'll do 44 feet, and then we'll do point, and then we'll do 333. Three, three. Now it doesn't have to be that specific. You could do three or uh, two threes. You don't have to do uh, three threes, but I always like to try and be as specific as possible. Then our width was eight. Always make sure that over on this side that you've got the feet down um, because there's inches and there's feet. And then if you do inches rather than feet, you'll definitely get some skewed measurements. And then the height, we always do our rock at about a two to three inch is normally a good estimate of where we'll put it in if it's a new bed. Um, so we'll just put in two inches here and then we're gonna hit calculate. And then you'll have your cubic yards up here, which is gonna be 2.19. You wanna make sure that beside the measurement that you used to uh, put in for that calculation, you wanna make sure that you're writing those down because in the end, we're gonna add all those up. So that's 2.19, and on this, you do need to be hyper-specific. So whatever number pops up there, you need to make sure that you're writing down so that you can add it up at the end. So when you have a ring around a tree that's gonna be circular, you can't use this cubic yard uh, calculator for a rectangle. Obviously, that doesn't make sense because you've got a circle versus a rectangle. So you wanna go down here to circular area calculator click that it's going to be in cubic yards now pay attention because however you took that measurement you need to take into account that when you're putting it in here it's going to be the diameter of it it's not going to be the radius so if you took the radius which is only halfway up into the circle you need to double that so you're getting the correct measurement here because if you don't you're going to have half of what you need so we had a tree with a diameter of uh, three and then we're gonna keep our depth, make sure you've got feet, make sure you got inches. We're gonna keep our depth at two, like we did earlier. You're gonna be at 0 .04. Now we had three of those trees, so we're just gonna multiply that by three, and you're gonna get that 0 .12 cubic yards. Whenever you get done doing your numbers and going through your estimates, we use QuickBooks. Here, gotta keep remembering to raise it. We use QuickBooks. So this is what ours looks like. Like I said earlier, I took out those numbers uh, just because I, I don't want anybody using our numbers, not because I care, uh, just because I don't want you to base it off of something that's probably not relevant to what's in your area. And it might be, but I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea with that's what they should be charging or it should be less or should be more, whatever the case may be for your area. So we ended up having 19 and a half yards of uh, washed fours. We're gonna use some landscape fabric. Our labor is gonna be about 16 and a half hours. We're planning on this being about a two day project. We're gonna take out some trees. Uh, we're gonna do some soil with the uh, flower bed that I showed you guys earlier. We're gonna make sure that we get that removed and then that we get it planted with some new grass seed. Then the last thing is, is always make sure that you are charging for your rentals if you're using any rentals like we're going to use a ditch witch on this make sure you're charging for your rentals a lot of people won't do it sometimes they just factor it into the cost i just throw it down there at the bottom i try to be as transparent as i possibly can with my customers i don't care if they know because if they like the price they like the price if they don't they don't um, i'm not trying to sound arrogant when i say that it's just our prices are our prices and there's no reason to try and hide anything um, let's see what else can I think of to tell you guys oh always make sure that you're in, writing in the description 
you know, if something could be up in the air. It helps you in the end for, you know, what was agreed upon for that estimate. And then it helps you keep track of when you've got so many different projects going on what you told the customer that you're gonna be doing so that there's no miscommunication, etc. And then always, 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 we have an accepted buy and an accepted date down at the bottom. Before you start a project, always make sure that you are getting that stuff signed. We've had customers in the past that have tried to jip us or say that they didn't agree to that or didn't agree to this, whatever it might be. And as soon as we start having people signed, they stopped. We didn't have any other complaints, didn't have any other problems, which is fine. You know, stuff happens. People try to get it as cheap as they possibly can, but always make sure you're covering your butt. Have everything signed, whether it's your agreement, whether it's your estimates, invoices eh, you really don't need to unless you're handing it directly to them and making sure that they have agreed upon any price changes have a price change form um, if you've done any different work make sure that you reflect that price and what's been done differently etc always 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 make sure you're getting everything signed so with that let me know if you have any questions let me know if you have any comments concerns whatever them that might be i appreciate you watching to the end of the video make sure you subscribe follow share with a friend whatever that may look like for you i appreciate it guys and we'll see you on the next one